People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. So you got curious, you went to MRIs or X-rays R Us down on the corner, you got a calcium score, it came back zero, you're good to go. You can stop taking your statin, right? That's exactly what the American Heart Association said just two years ago. There was a an article recently, October 27th, 2021, JAMA Cardiology, very, very well known JAMA, maybe half dozen medical journals in the world, Journal of the American American Medical Association. In fact, there's a series or networks of JAMA, the regular JAMA, then JAMA Cardiology, JAMA Internal Medicine. This one's JAMA Cardiology. Here's the title, Association of Age with the Diagnostic Value of Coronary Artery Calcium Score for Ruling Out Coronary Stenosis in Symptomatic Patients. You know, it's interesting. Titles can be a problem, right? It's could you have understood, would you have picked up on that had you just seen that title? You know, people on YouTube are have taken clickbait kind of titles to a new level. Maybe the guys in academics could uh, learn a little bit about that in terms of helping people understand that's not going to draw eyeballs and people are going to miss the significance. It's going to go right over their head. But the evidence is very interesting and it's very helpful to know. This was a study published in JAMA, as we mentioned, last October. The diagnostic value of a zero coronary artery calcium score to rule out obstructive coronary artery disease really hasn't been clear. So the objective of the study was to assess the diagnostic value of a coronary artery calcium score of zero for reducing the risk of obstructive coronary artery disease. The design was a cohort study, information from the Western Denmark Heart Registry, and it had a median follow-up time of 4.3 years. They included patients age 18 or older who underwent a CTA, computed tomography angiography. It's a type of way of looking at the arteries. You put some radionuclide dye in a vein, like in the arm, and then you start taking pictures, especially when that nuclide gets to the arteries of the heart. The catchment time was January 2008 to December 2017 for looking for symptoms associated with coronary artery disease. In other words, you'd say, well, why would an 18 or 25 year old get one of these? Well, they had symptoms and they happened to go ahead and get this. So if they got this study, the CTA, they said, let's go ahead and get a calcium score while we're at it using this similar technology in these individuals and see the predictive value of a zero calcium score. Now, here's a critical point. How did they define obstructive coronary artery disease? It was defined as 50% or more occlusion. In other words, the lumen, the, the hole where the blood flowed in these arteries was more than 50% blocked. So the reason that's an important issue, it's important in a couple of ways. The first one is as many as they got here, multiply it times, gosh, we don't know how many, maybe 10 times because there are a lot of people that have obstruction or have plaque, but it's less than 50%. What's even more significant about that is this. Two thirds of the people that have a heart attack don't have 50% obstruction of their flow. They have plaque, but it's less than 50%. So as you can see here, their definition of obstructive coronary disease is missing most of the people that have risk due to plaque in the coronary arteries. Let me repeat that. The way they designed this study, they're missing most of the people that had a zero calcium score and still had plaque. They're only picking up people that had a zero calcium score and so much plaque that they had over 50% occlusion. Another more practical point, which I made a second ago and I'll repeat is they're also missing the vast majority of people that have risk. Again, two thirds of heart attacks happen with people that have plaque, but it's not 50% occlusion. So coronary artery calcium score and CAD, the main outcomes, the proportion of individuals with obstructive CAD, in other words, more than 50% occlusion, yet they had a calcium score of zero. The results, 23,700 
759 symptomatic patients were included. Again, these were people that had symptoms. That's why they were getting CTA and calcium score. Um, some of these were young people. Some of them were you know, in their 60s and 70s as well. 54% had a zero calcium score. Overall prevalence or portion of obstructive coronary artery disease was 3% in those younger than 40 and 8% on those 70 or older. Think about that. So you have symptoms, you get a coronary calcium score, it's negative. If you're younger than 40, the probability is that one out of 30, that you have so much plaque in there that it's a more than 50% obstruction. Wonder what portion of people had less than 50% plaque and didn't get picked up. From those with obstructive coronary disease, 14% had a calcium score of zero. Prevalence decreased depending on age with 58% of those 39 to 68 years old to 5% on those 70 years old. So more results on this study. The added diagnostic value of a zero calcium score decreased at a younger age with a risk factor adjusted diagnostic ratio of a zero calcium score ranging from 0.68 or 30% lower likelihood of obstructive coronary disease in younger than 40 to 0.18 on those 70 and older. Now, if that's confusing you, you're not alone. It confused me a couple of times too. I think the basic point behind it is the zero calcium score when you have symptoms is even more likely to be wrong and uh, hiding risk if you're younger. Now, think about it. When you think about it, if that's the case, that actually makes sense because what we've always been concerned about, those of us that understand plaque and how it works and how calcium classification is actually a demonstration of the process of stabilizing. When you think through all that, it makes more sense that young people are more likely to be in this risk category because they just have not had the time yet to start calcifying that soft plaque. They've had time to start developing soft plaque, but they haven't had time to start calcifying it. And that's really the people that we've been worried about from day one. What if somebody had started to develop plaque, it's started out soft, which it always does during that inflammatory phase, and it had not had time yet to stabilize. And sure enough, we tend to see that more likely in younger people. The presence of obstructive versus non-obstructive coronary artery disease among those with a calcium score was associated with an adjusted hazard ratio of 1.51. And again, I don't really care that much about whether it's obstructive or non-obstructive because Two thirds of the heart attacks happen in people that don't have obstructive. So really the major thing that that might tell you is, again, as you would expect, using that number of 1.51, there's a significant increase of the number of people that have plaque compared to those that had obstructive plaque. So conclusions and key points of the authors. And as you know, I have a different perspective on some of these. I was an epidemiologist at Hopkins and epidemiologists study Studies. And they look at the quality of the study, they look at what's known about the science, they look at the evidence, and they'll often come up with some different conclusions. I think I've already shared with you some of my conclusions, but I also share one of the key conclusions that these folks came up with. Significant proportion of obstructive coronary artery disease occurred among younger patients without a positive calcium score. And overall, I agree that that's a major risk. I don't think that's the major finding. The major finding is that a lot of folks have plaque, especially younger folks, even though they had a zero calcium score. And again, the difference between my conclusion and the author's conclusion is I'm not worried so much about whether it's obstructive. I don't look at plumbing. I know that inflammation and soft plaque is the risk, whether it occludes the artery or not. The diagnostic value of a calcium score of zero to rule out artery disease was dependent on age, with added diagnostic value being smaller for younger patients. In symptomatic patients younger than 60, obstructive artery disease occurred among those without a calcium score, with an increased risk of myocardial infarction and all heart attack and death. So remember, calcium score does not detect soft plaque. That is the significant limitation of the calcium score. So thank you very much. This was the major content for today. 